Yesterday, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who is uh, freshly back from his maternity leave, I guess, went on Fox News and mocked Americans for their hesitancy to buy electric vehicles. Watch. Tesla sales fell 8.5 percent the first quarter of this year. Ford this week is laying off two thirds of its workforce at the F-150 electric lightning plant. It's also scaling back a battery production facility because of sagging sales. EV sales are nowhere near what this president wanted or expected, yet the administration continues to shove them down consumers' throats. Why? Well, let's be clear. Consumers have wanted and purchased more EVs every single year than the year before. And, uh, you know, Tesla is facing more competition as GM and Ford and Stellantis and other competitive players uh, start to make sure they get a piece of the EV market. Let's be clear that uh, Mm. the automotive sector is moving toward EVs, and we can't pretend otherwise. Sometimes when these debates happen, I feel like it's the early 2000s. Wait, were you not being clear before? Some people who uh, think that we can just have landline phones forever. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah, that's what it, those oldies who just can't give up their landline phones because they can't figure out how to use that cell phone. That's what this is. Or it couldn't possibly be because, you know, maybe electric cars are not superior. Couldn't be that. Our land, did they ever ban landline phones? Was there ever exactly. a government that said after 2035, you cannot have a landline phone? Isn't it so interesting that it seems to me that all of the things that like, if it was so great, you wouldn't have to ban the competition. Same with Obamacare and all of this. It's like, but if it was so great, you wouldn't have to mandate it. Yeah. People would just do the thing because it was awesome. Right. There, there would be no need for mandates. The only reason that Ford and all these other companies are like pushing out some of these cars that are clearly not even ready for the market mm-hmm. is because they're being mandated in right. places like California that they cannot have gas powered cars anymore. Right. And, that, and that bill is sp- and th- that law is spreading to other states. That, that, that is the only reason they are forcing a technology. Look, I think that electric cars are cool. Right. I, I've driven a Tesla. I've driven several. Like I will. Probably won't ever be able to afford one, but uh, they're which fun. is an- which is another issue. That's a big mm-hmm. issue. Okay. That's a very big issue. You're, like, most people now don't even buy brand new cars because they're too expensive. They'll right. try and find you know a ten year old car or whatever. But that's not going to be doable. Right. Once this happens, past twenty thirty five, you're not going to be able to do that. Plus, you're not going to be able to even work on your own vehicles to save money, which is something I've had to do in this economy. Well, I want to read uh, an AP headline here. U.S. first quarter auto sales grew nearly 5% despite high interest rates, but EV growth slows further. So sales of electric vehicles grew only 2.7% to just over 268,000 during the quarter, which was you know, just a little bit below the 47% growth that uh, fueled record sales and 7.6 market share last year. So, so I, you know... I just may, maybe because Jason, you're right. There are certain models of Teslas, um, the Cybertruck or whatever. Like that's it's super cool. It looks really cool, but nobody can afford those models. So when you go to the ones that people can afford, there are many issues with them. Plus, maybe people who drive long distances don't want to be having to map out where the freaking charging stations are. Right. So that they can make sure that they charge their car. I mean, like, there road are serious are issues. You can't do road trips. Yeah. So and and then what are you going to do? Take a plane? Those are crashing all over the place. I get, I'm probably not going to be here next week. I get, <laughs> can we change that to like the? I might I might be flying United. You may never see me again. <laughs> but so I okay. I want to um I want to play one more for you as as we're talking about the mandate. Go ahead. I make one more yeah. comment. Yeah. I, I, there's never been a technology when they said you're you have to use this. Right. Like when 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 let's stick with phones. When cell phones came out, they didn't say this is all you exactly. can use. Right. And we don't care if it's not ready yet. This right. is the only thing you can use. This technology, look, I I agree that that's probably the future. It's going to go into something like that. If not, then something similar off of gasoline, but it's not ready. Right. So why push something well, on us it's not ready? It's not just even the technology that's not ready. It's the equivalent of saying, "Okay, by by next year everyone's got to move from landlines to cell phones." And by the way, we've got five cell cell phone towers across right. America. Right. How's the grid going to handle it's, it? It can't. Right. Exactly. They can't handle it in California. Can. It yeah. can't do it. Right, exactly. So, you know, we're talking about while this is going on, the regime is pushing for this mandate to be mandated everywhere. Electric, electric vehicles for all. Um, I'm totally sure 
that the decision being made today on the strategic oil reserves is just a total coincidence. Listen to what the Biden administration said. Today, the Biden administration announced that it's going to pull back its plans to refill the SPR, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. You know, they drained that to try and bring gas prices down earlier. Well, they've been trying to fill it back up, but now it is way too expensive. So they say we hit $86 today on the futures market. They say it costs too much, so we're not going to do it. And now is the time of huge mm, political, uh, geopolitical it. risk out there. Well, that's so, a conundrum. I don't know. Don't know. This summer could be a tough summer if you want to drive somewhere. <laughs> or heat your house. Or do anything. Oh. <laughs> or eat food. Because no trucks ever right. operate on gasoline, do they? It's almost like this was all part of a master plan. Hmm. Mm. How the hell does Pete Buddha judge? How does he have the cojones to go on network TV and actually talk about that? How does he have a job? I mean, think about how do all any of them disasters. have a job? How do any of them have a job in the Biden regime? How, you know, they're how all... does Biden have a job in the Biden regime? Right, that's what I'm saying. Well, he's the only one that's not a DEI hire. You know, in, in any sane administration, they would have fired Buttigieg a long time ago just because of the appearance. It might not have been his fault, but because of the appearance of, of the, everything. Of the chest feeding? Uh, <laughs> Yes, right. <laughs> exactly my point, Sarah. Well, not really, but no. I mean, how, think about how many things he's been he's presided over, like yeah. the the supply chain crisis, right at the very beginning. Uh, presided over is very loosely used here because he didn't do anything. He was on paternity leave at the <laughs> yes. time, and he stayed on it. Yes. He didn't have the ball. Uh, I'm going to say balls instead of cojones. He didn't have the balls to come back and, and just to check in and say hey, it's he all. He might good. not have balls at all, Jason. I'm not a, sure. That's another. I excellent have nine point. children. I've never been on paternity leave. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't chest feed your child, so you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Like, boy, oh, you only thought I didn't yeah. chest feed my child. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to play, speaking of diversity hires within the Biden regime, I want to play uh, KJP, White House Press Secretary, the esteemed White House Press Secretary, always poignant, Karine Jean-Pierre, on this latest decision watch. You guys started draining the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to try and help with the Putin price hike a few years ago. You said you were going to refill it, but now it doesn't seem like that's happening. Why? Well, from I, I believe the Department of Energy is uh, is responsible for for that uh, but particular uh, component. That's your administration. <laughs> that, so I would refer you to the Trump. Department of Energy. Trump. I know there were certain components to that, uh, and how they were going to move forward in refilling, uh, refilling it. <laughs> I, they would have, this have more specifics on that for you. Okay. Ridiculous. Is the Department of Energy who, like? Is it have an office in independent, Beijing? Independent, right? Is yeah, it independent? I mean, who runs the Department of Energy, ma'am? <laughs> it's it's you. I've just realized the problem. These boneheads don't understand that they, they're actually in charge of those departments. <laughs> they're like, well, you got to check in with them. We don't know anything about that. We, but you run that. We do? Oh, it's like the shit. Spider -Man. It's a Spider-Man. Yeah, the meme. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a clown Imagine, show. there's a border crisis. Why well, you need to speak to the Homeland Security. Homeland Security is like, but you're the guys that are our bosses. Yeah, but you're the Department of Homeland Security, so you should show. Yeah, but you guys tell us what. No, but you. It's so stupid. Oh. I mean, but with the amount of civics knowledge in the country right now, there's probably a lot of people watching it and going, I, she's made an excellent point. Like, what That's can they right. do? It's not her it's, fault. It's she's not like they're their bosses or anything. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What's Joe Biden supposed to do? <laughs> he has nothing to do with the Department of Energy. It's kind of true, though, really, isn't it? I mean, the truth is, is he has nothing to do with any of it. I mean, I don't well, know fair. who's, he, like, pulling, who's yeah. the puppet master behind that's working it, but he, he doesn't know what he's doing, does he? That is fair. That is fair. But the people who, I mean, there's obviously someone who does, or a, a cabal of people who may or may not have fortified the last election. I, but don't take my word for it. Go read it in Time Magazine. I didn't say that. I, when I say it, it's conspiracy theory, okay? But Time, it's just that Time Magazine said it, so. If you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, click here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on, you know you do. Click here.